One of my earliest memories is being evacuated during the war. Um, the bombs dropped very near our little bungalow in, I think it was July 1944. So mum and my sister, who was a bit younger than me, were evacuated to Birmingham because the tiles of our house and the windows were all destroyed and the bungalow was not habitable. We were evacuated to Birmingham. Um, not sure how long we were there, but from there we went, moved to my grandmother's house in Portsmouth. And that was when I started school. So that must have been January 1945. By Easter, we were back in Welling. So our house obviously was repaired and I started primary school in Welling at Hook Lane. I can remember during the war, or else I have been told, that the lake in Danson Park was drained. The lake would have been a landmark for the German um, aircraft, so it was drained. There was also, on the site, which is now Bexley Grammar School, but was part of Danson Park, um, what we used to call as children the gun site, so I imagine that must have been where ammunition was perhaps stored. Um, also in Danson Park, as a child, I remember there being an outdoor swimming pool uh, where we used to spend lots of happy hours in our school holidays in the summer as children, but that was eventually drained and I believe there were plans to make it into a roller skating rink, but they never materialised because vandals destroyed what was left of the bottom of the pool so it was grassed over now and you would not know where it is if you walked through Danson Park now. Danson Park is the focal point of Welling. It's a very large recreational area uh, with a large house. I don't know how old the house is but uh, it overlooks a big oak tree that's been there for probably a hundred years or more uh, and a lake. The, uh, the manor house was uh, renovated and um, the builders at the time decided to uh, take uh, many of the items from inside the house and, and sell them on. I believe now it has been fully restored obviously by another company. This is now open to the public so they would have had to replicate uh, the items that have been stolen. The lake froze over one winter and a few of us boys, as typical boys do, decided to see how far we could go out on the ice. Um, we got out uh, probably about 20, 30 feet before we heard a large crack and then we decided it was probably time to head back to shore. The lake at its deepest point, I'm told, is only about four feet deep. So we probably would have just got very, very cold if we'd fallen in. There was an old um, children's play park which had been replaced by a very modern play park by the time my children were starting to grow up. Danson Stables is uh, now a, a pub come restaurant uh, in the middle of Danson Park by the car park. Uh, I remember that as a stable uh, where the park keepers used to keep a lot of machinery. Um, I don't recall seeing horses but um, a lot of um, uh, machinery were kept in the stables. I can remember belonging to the Brownies as a little child and I can remember exactly where the telephone box was that we learned to make a telephone call from a public call box with two pence in our pockets. And also I remember Welling Corner had an air raid siren next to an old blue Doctor Who type police box. When I was a fairly young child Welling High Street was completely different to what it is now. Where we now have Tesco's car park was a ballroom called the Embassy Ballroom. And it was fairly near there that there was this little telephone box that I did my um, brownie telephone call from. And then on the other side of the high street was a co-op, a rather large co-op. Today, you will find that has disappeared and so has the ballroom. The ballroom was pulled down, I would say, in the early 60s and a small Tesco store was put in its place 
with a square car park area with shops around the edge. But now that has all gone as well and there is a huge Tesco store. And opposite the huge Tesco store is a Morrison supermarket and that took over the site of the old co-op store. Many, many of the shops have changed, of course. There was, there may still be a baker's in Welling called Worth's. Uh, they had a uh, policy on a Saturday evening of selling off all their buns and cakes and bread at half price or less. So there used to be a, a large queue at Worth's from about four o'clock in the afternoon. There's people queued up to buy cheaper food. Uh, Worth's never opened on Sunday and this was probably before the Sunday trading laws anyway. There's a little coffee house fairly near Boots which is now called the Coffee Pot and that has always been a cafe of some type or another. Um, and I can remember it at one point being an ice cream parlour and it was called Ferrari's Ice Cream Parlour. I remember somebody telling me there used to be trams all the way through Welling. And that had two long prongs coming out the roof which attached to two electric cables which went along the road. And should that come unhooked, then the bus would stop and the conductor would have to get off, find a pole which was fit, fitted underneath the bus and hook these um, parallel poles back onto their wires. Along Belgrove Road, which is towards Welling Station, on the north side was a cinema called the Granada and it had quite a famous organ, the cinema. As a child we would go to uh, the cinema on a Saturday morning to go and see what we called penny pictures. So I imagine it cost us a penny to go to the cinema on a Saturday morning and see children's films. Welling Cinema, as I remember, I used to go along and, uh, and, and watch films there. Probably the last film that I recall seeing was Tron, and I remember seeing that on New Year's Day. But I can't remember the year, I think it was in the 80s. On our railway line to London, we had a double-decker train, which I think was the only one of its kind, especially in this area. And we used to know what time it would be coming through each day. So it was great fun to um, get a ticket and go to London on a double-decker train. It was strange. You got in the carriage as you would nowadays, but between the seats you would find three stairs which would take you up to some seats above you, three or four stairs. It wasn't as tall as a double-decker bus, but it was two, two heights of um, passenger seats.